If you want to do unlimited voice conversions, song covers, and train your own voice models for free, then this is the best tool to use. I'll show you how to turn your voice into Mr. Beast, how to extract vocals and instrumentals from a song, and how to train a Gura model from scratch and turn yourself into Gura. This is 100% free and open source, and you don't actually need a GPU for most of it. The tool is called RVC, or Retrieval Based Voice Conversion, and I already did a tutorial on version 1 using Google Colab. Today, I'm going to show you how to install version 2 to your computer and run it locally. This is important because Colab is cracking down on people using voice cloning on their platform. Because, you know, AI and machine learning, it's supposed to be used to improve humanity and save the planet. Not turn yourself into an anime girl or generate images. So if you use Google Colab for voice cloning, you're gonna get disconnected pretty often. I always recommend now to install everything locally and run it on your computer. RVC version 2 also has a few upgrades from version 1, including a lot more capabilities such as RMVPE and Formant Shift. I'll talk about all these capabilities as we go through the tutorial. So let's get started first with the installation. First step is to go to this GitHub, which I'll link to in the description below. You can see that there are two types of installs. The first one is called infer. This is the lighter install, which only has voice conversion, but not model training. In other words, you can change your voice to someone else, but you can't train any new voices from scratch. Congrats to all non-NVIDIA users out there because this install does not require an NVIDIA GPU. The second install is called Infer Train, and this is for voice conversion as well as training your own voice models. And for this one, you do need a GPU. Note that it's also almost double the size of just the Infer model. So the Infer one is 2.5 gigabytes, the Infer Train is almost 5 gigabytes. To keep everything organized, let's make a new folder on our computer called RVC. Next, let's download this Infer Train file. Once it's downloaded, open it and it'll open up this command prompt window and start installing the package. Note that it's around 4.7 gigabytes, so it's going to take a while to download everything. One eternity later. Once it's finished, you should see a 7z file. You can unzip this with WinRAR, and if you don't have that, you can download it for free in the description below. Once you open it, you should see this Mangio RVC folder. Extract it into your parent folder. Now this folder contains over 60,000 files, so it's going to take a few minutes to unzip everything. Three days later. All right, once that's done, you can actually go ahead and delete this 7z file. Next, open the folder and then double click on this go-web file to start the interface. This should open a new window in your browser with RVC version 2. It's that simple. You can see multiple tabs at the top here. So the first one, Model Inference, is for converting a voice into someone else's voice. The next tab called Vocals Accompaniment Separation, it's basically separating vocals and instrumentals from a song. And then the third tab, Train, is to train your own AI voice model from scratch by feeding it audio samples. And then the next two, Checkpoint Processing and Export Onyx, these are more advanced and you probably don't need to use it, and it's beyond the scope of this tutorial. And then also check out this FAQ section, which answers some common questions you might have or addresses some errors you might get while running RVC. Let's start with changing my voice into someone else. So the first step is to actually look for a voice model online. So there's a lot of options. See this video for all the options available. I'm going to go to voicemodels.com and then search for Mr. Beast. You can see that there is a voice model of Mr. Beast that exists. So we will go ahead and download this. Let's download this zip file into the weights folder of our Mangio RVC folder. Now, if you go to the FAQ section in question four, where it says how to use others models, it says that in the future, you don't need to unzip the zip file. You can just simply have the zip file in the weights folder. 
but right now we still do need to unzip everything. So let's open this zip file and then extract the MrBeast.pth file back into the weights folder. We only need to extract the pth file. The index file is optional. Now going back to our interface in the model inference tab, simply click refresh voice list and then in the dropdown, you should be able to see Mr. Beast. Okay, next step is we need to feed it an audio file to convert to Mr. Beast's voice. So I'm just going to use a recording of myself. I'll just play this for you real quick so you can hear what it sounds like. If you found this video helpful, remember to like, share, and destroy that subscribe button. Also, stay tuned for the latest AI news and tutorials. So going back to the interface, you can see that you should paste the path of your audio file in here. Now you can use whatever path or folder you want, but their default is in the slash audios folder. So actually, let's just drag my recording into the audios folder. And then after we've done that, we simply need to rename this audio.wave into myrecording.wave, which is the name of my file. Next up, we have the transpose window. This is basically how much you want to change the pitch of your output. So generally, male to male or female to female, you can leave it as zero, but male to female, you should increase the pitch to like plus eight to plus 12 or beyond. And then female to male, you would decrease it. So you would usually set it to minus eight or minus 12. Since I'm converting to Mr. Beast, which is male to male, let's just leave it at zero. The feature index files aren't really necessary, like I mentioned before, so we can basically skip those. The search feature ratio is how much accent and articulation you want to add from the AI voice model. If you drag it all the way to zero, it's going to be less dynamic, there's going to be less articulation, it's gonna, it's gonna sound more flat. If you drag it all the way to one, it's going to be very dynamic and there's gonna be a lot of accent, but it might introduce some noise and artifacts. Let's just leave it at the default of 0.75 and see what we get. The next window at the bottom here is the pitch extraction algorithm. There's a few algorithms you can choose from, and there's a few additions that aren't present in version one, such as RMVPE. Just note that the ones at the top are lower quality, but they're faster to run. And then as you go through this list all the way down to RMVPE, this is the highest quality, but it takes a longer time to run. For us, let's go with RMVPE since it's the best quality. All right, let's click convert. And you can see that it's processing down here. Since it's a pretty short clip, it should only take a few seconds to, to finish converting. All right, let's play the final output and see what it sounds like. If you found this video helpful, remember to like, share, and destroy that subscribe button. Also, stay tuned for the latest AI news and tutorials. Sounds pretty good to me. Another cool feature in this tab is the batch conversion. So you can convert multiple audio files in one go. Instead of pointing it to only one audio recording, you input the folder path and it would convert all of the audio files in the folder to Mr. Beast. So that's it. This is how you convert any audio into someone else's voice. All right, moving on to the next tab. This tab is for separating vocals and instrumentals from a song and also removing reverb or echo from vocals. You can see in the description that the algorithm is actually based off of the UVR5 model, which I've done a tutorial on before. And I'd actually recommend you download UVR5 separately and do all your vocal separation there because the native interface offers a lot more customizability. For example, you can choose different algorithms and stack algorithms together to get a much cleaner result. Again, check out my tutorial here on how this works. That being said, the vocal separation here is also pretty good. So that's what I'm gonna demonstrate right now. So first of all, let's choose a song to separate the vocals from the instrumentals. I'm going to use this song by Akuya. Let me just play this for you real quick so you hear what it sounds like. Okay, so 
抜け出そうぜ君を連れ飛び出した風が通り過ぎた闇と混ざり合った君の笑い声が小さく愛の空に見てそんなんで生きていけんのかもう戻れないぜなんて歩きそうな Next, we're gonna download the MP3 version of this song to our computer. And you can actually save it wherever you want because we are going to drag and drop the file into RVC later. Alright, so back in RVC, you can see you're given two options to input the file. The first option is to just type in the folder path, and then it's going to find all the files in that folder. You can also just drag and drop your audio file into the second box. Note that it says priority is given to reading from the folder. So, in order for you to drag and drop a file here, we need to get rid of everything in the folder path. Alright, so let's drag and drop our song into here. Next window is the model. So, if you click on this drop down, you can see a variety of options. The first three, HP2, 3, and 5, Are for separating vocals and instrumentals from a song. And then the last four are for removing reverb or echo from a voice or vocals. So, out of HP 2, 3, and 5, which one do you choose? Well, if you read the description above, you generally choose HP 2 or 3 if the song does not have a lot of harmony vocals. And then HP 3 preserves the vocals slightly better. But it may have some leak of the instrumental. Now, HP5 is used when your song contains a lot of harmony vocals, and HP5 is just better at separating the lead vocals from the harmony vocals. I'll show you the song again, and we can see if it has any strong harmony vocals. <laughs> You can see that the lead vocals are pretty clean, there's not a lot of harmony vocals, so in that case, we can choose HP3. Alright, the last step is to specify the folder for the extracted vocals and the extracted instrumentals. So you can choose whatever folder you want, but what we're gonna do is use the audio outputs folder, which already exists. So you just need to right click into the folder and then select copy address as text. And then paste it in here. You can choose whatever format you want the output to be. In our case, let's just leave it as MP3. And that's it, we are all set. Let's go ahead and click convert. Alright, l this shouldn't take too long,、uh, and when it's done, you should see this success message. And then if you open the audio outputs folder, which is the folder that we specified, you can see the newly extracted vocals and instrumentals. Let's go ahead and play each one so you can hear the results. And then here we have the vocals. You can see the naming convention is a bit weird. So the vocals are actually named instrument in the file name, and then the instrumentals are named vocal in the file name. I think what it means is they removed the vocal and they removed the instrumental. So just keep that in mind that the naming is kind of weird. Alright, l well, that covers this tab, which is separating vocals from instrumentals. We can move on to the final tab and the most exciting one, which is training your own voice model from scratch. So, today we are going to create a voice model of Gura from scratch. So, let's first of all name the experiment Gura. Sample rate, we can leave it as is, and then whether the model has pitch guidance. This is mandatory if your input is singing vocals, and optional if your input is just speech. So it's always recommended just to leave this on, which is the default. And then version 1 or version 2, it's generally better to check version 2, which is the newer version, and it's more compatible with other platforms like WOKADA, which is a real time voice converter, or Kits AI, which is an online voice conversion platform. Number of CPU processes, we can just leave it as the default. 
The higher the number, the faster this runs, but it also takes away bandwidth, so it's harder or slower to multitask on other things if you increase the number of processes here. Next step is we need to feed it data. We need to feed it audio samples of her talking or singing. So let's go on YouTube and just search Gura talking, and then we can choose this one and see what it sounds like. Uh, do you get nervous maintaining eye contact when talking with people, or are you the type to stare people down when talking? Can we get a staring contact? I think I'm just shy. No, here's the thing. Everything falls off my silverware. I'll miss my mouth. I'll spit because it's easy to eat. I won't mess it up. And I All right, you can hear some really subtle background music. So ideally what you would do is download the audio file and then using UVR or the vocal separation tab, plug this in so that you remove the background music and get a cleaner version of just her voice. But for this tutorial, I think we can get away with just using the audio as is, without removing the background music. I think it's quiet enough that it doesn't affect the training of the voice model too much. So let's just go ahead and download the audio of this, using the same YouTube to MP3 tool that we used before. You can save it wherever you want for now. So for us, let's save it in the audios folder inside the Manjo RVC folder. Now, going back to the train tab in RVC, you can see that we only specify the path of the training folder. So this is a folder that contains all the audio samples that you want to use to train the model. You can't have any other audio files in there. So what we need to do is actually create a separate folder. Let's call it Gura. And then move our Gura audio into that folder. So that's the only audio file that exists inside the folder. Next, we simply specify the path of the folder, which in our case is Gura. Next, let's click process data. You'll start to see some logs popping up in this output window. Wait until you see this end preprocess, which means that it's finished. It's a success. All right, next step is the feature extraction. You can see that it has auto detected my GPU. So usually you don't need to change these settings. And then for the pitch extraction algorithm, PM is the fastest, but the lowest quality. And as you go down this list, it gets slower, but better quality. I'd recommend using RMVPE, which is the best quality. And this is the standard that most people use to train their models. And that's all for this section. Let's click feature extraction. Depending on your hardware, this might take a while to finish, but look out for this all feature done message, which indicates that it's done and it's a success. All right, the most exciting part is training your model. So let's go over each of these settings. Let's start with the total training epoch. An epoch is basically a round of training. So the more epochs you have, the more training your model has and the more accurate it would be in depicting your voice. However, at a certain point, if you like drag this all the way to like thousands of epochs, it doesn't add much quality anymore. And what it adds is noise and artifacts and it kind of distorts your voice. Since our audio input is only two and a half minutes, I think an epoch amount of 50 would be good enough. The more audio data you feed it, the higher your epochs can be. So usually like the models you see, they're probably using a lot of data and they can train it for thousands of epochs. And then let's skip over to this option, save a small model at each save point. If I turn this off, note that this save frequency disappears. And if I turn it on again, this save frequency appears. So this just basically toggles the frequency on and off. And then the save frequency is how many epochs you want to run before saving a snapshot or saving your progress. So why this is helpful is let's say you set the epochs to like 10,000 epochs and it's going to take you hours to finish training the model. But then halfway, if your power runs out or something happens to your computer and need to shut down, if you don't have save points, then you'll need to start from zero again, which could be annoying. So saving your progress means you can continue training from that point onwards instead of starting from zero every time. So the save frequency is how often you want to save a model. So if we set this to 10 and our epoch is 50, it's going to save a model when it reaches epoch 10, and then when it reaches 20, 30, 40, and then finally 50. Note that, of course, the more models you save, the more space it takes up on your hard drive. So for us, since we're training on 50 epochs, let's set 
the save frequency to 25 so it only saves two times. And then batch size per GPU, we can leave it at the default. And then whether to only save the latest checkpoint to the hard drive. So basically it deletes all the past checkpoints and only saves the one with the most epochs. You can check that if you want. And then this cache all training sets, etc., etc. It's pretty self-explanatory. So if your data set is less than 10 minutes, you can check this to speed up the training. Since our data set is only like two and a half minutes, let's check this so it would make things faster. And then these two windows, the pre-trained model G path and the D path. I'll talk more about this after we train the model. So that's basically it. We are good to go. So the first step is to actually click the train feature index button. Wait till you see this success message. And also if you go back to the logs folder and then click on your experiment name, which in our case is Gura, you can see the index file is added here. And finally, the last step is to train your model. So let's click this. Depending on how much data you have and how many epochs you set, this could take a while. So actually, if you open your command prompt window, you can see the number of epochs training. So right now, you can see that we are at epoch 4, epoch 5, 6, etc. So this is going to keep training until we get to epoch 50. One eternity later. Alright, if all is good in your CMD window, you should see final checkpoint success you should also see this message in the output information window, which indicates that it's a success and it has finished. Now, if you go to the weights folder, you can also see that our Guru model is now in here. So the guru.pth file, this is the final voice model. You can also see there's a Gura E25 and a Gura E50 because we've set the save frequency to 25. So it's going to save one model at epoch 25 and one model at epoch 50. But since our model is finished training, we already have the final model here, we can get rid of these two. Now let's say you train this at 50 epochs, and then you, you ran a voice conversion, and the voice isn't good enough. Well, you can actually continue training this where you left off. So if you go back to the logs folder and then in Gura, you can see this dpth file and a gpth file. So if you want to continue training this further, you can just input the file path into these two windows and then train it further. All right, the moment of truth. Let's see how our Gura model does. So let's go back to the model inference tab. And then in the voice dropdown, you can see that she's not there yet. So let's click refresh voice. And then you should be able to see Gura. Let's convert my recording to her voice. So again, I'll, I'll play you my recording so you can hear what it sounds like. If you found this video helpful, remember to like, share, and destroy that subscribe button. Also, stay tuned for the latest AI news and tutorials. And then the path of this is just slash audios and then my recording. So I'm going to input that here. And then since this is male to female and Gura's voice is quite high pitched, I'm going to transpose this to plus 15. And then all of the settings, we can just leave it at the default. And then yes, let's use our MVPE, which is the best quality. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and click convert. One eternity later. And here's what we get. If you found this video helpful, remember to like, share, and destroy that subscribe button. Also, stay tuned for the latest AI news and tutorials. I also wanted to talk a bit about this new feature, which is still in experimental mode. It's called Formant Shift. So for what Formant basically is, is if you decrease your Formant, you'll sound like this. And then if you increase it, you'll sound like a chipmunk. So this usually helps a bit more with like converting from male to female or female to male. So let's just check this and see the options. So under the presets, you can see there's female to male, male to female. We are of course going to choose male to female. And then let's just leave the rest of the settings at the default value and see what we get. If you found this video helpful, remember to like, share, and destroy that subscribe button. Also, stay tuned for the latest AI news and tutorials. You can see it's a really subtle difference from the original, but yeah, this is what it sounds like if you turn this option on. Just for fun, let's also make Gura sing something. So we are going to use that Akuya track again, but plug it into here. So let me find that again and then play it for you again so you hear what it sounds like. So 
So I'm going to copy that and then paste it into the audios folder and then rename this to Acuia. And then since this is female to female, but Gura's voice is slightly higher pitch, let's transpose it to two. Let's click convert and see what we get. This is not bad considering we only used like two and a half minutes of audio data from Gura and we only trained it on 50 epochs. So yeah, this is really impressive. So that basically wraps up all of the major functions you can do with RVC version 2. Again, this is free and unlimited. You can run this all locally on your computer without internet. And the only step that requires a GPU is the training. Everything else, you don't even need a GPU to run. If you found this video helpful, remember to like, share, and destroy that subscribe button. Also, we built a website where you can search for all the AI tools out there. Check it out at ai-search.io.